We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. What is a moonshot? A moonshot is a goal that seems near impossible, seems crazy, and yet, through human collaboration, through human innovation, we can do it. We make the impossible happen. I'm going to share with you today some tools and techniques, because moonshots used to be the province of governments, like JFK, a great government initiative. But now we can take the power into our own hands. We can do moonshots. We have the ability and the know-how now from 20 years of doing moonshots again and again to have repeatable success. Let me start with the X Prize. The first X Prize was won just about a decade ago. The first prize was $10 million to go to space and back twice in two weeks. You have to build your own vehicle with no government support whatsoever. You have to go up to space, 100 kilometers, and come back twice in two weeks. And Bert Rattan and his team won that prize. But not only did they win $10 million, they won an even greater opportunity, an opportunity to build something called Virgin Galactic, an opportunity for all of us to go to space, for all of us to go up and see the Earth, our planet, from 100 kilometers up, for all of us to feel what it's like to be an astronaut. So we now know that it's possible to have these moonshots, to have these impossible goals. And the XPRIZE didn't stop there. XPRIZE did not stop there. XPRIZE put out five more moonshots. Moonshots for education, moonshots for our oceans, and moonshots for healthcare. One of the newest moonshots right now from XPRIZE is the Qualcomm Tricorder Prize. Remember the Tricorder from Star Trek? Well, now we're going to make it happen. This is a medical lab on a phone. This is going to impact lots of people because right now in the field, we don't have enough doctors. We can put this out there, test for one of any the key communicable diseases out there, and make sure we know what to do based on what the phone tells us. And so this is a prize that will affect more than a billion people out there. This is a moonshot, and this moonshot will happen. But it's not just about X Prize. Google has started a project called Google X Labs. Google X Labs includes, of course, the self-driving car, includes Project Loon to take Wi-Fi to the whole planet, includes Makani taking wind power to new levels using a completely different approach. The self-driving car is a great example of moonshots because like all moonshots, it was considered absolutely nuts. Go back to the press around the Google self-driving car when it first came out, the idea first came out eight, nine years ago. People thought it was nuts. People thought it was crazy. People said it could not be done. A computer driving better than humans? Now, of course, what do we know? We know that every major car company has been catalyzed by Google to start their own self-driving car. In the next five, 10 years, we're going to see lots of these on the road. <laughs> this is our future. And it was a moonshot. It was considered absolutely nuts. And it's something that's going to happen in our lifetime. This will save millions of lives. But it's not just Google X, of course. We have high hopes for Huli XYZ. Huli XYZ is a great lab. We'll find out what comes out of Huli in the next few years as well. When we look at the grand challenges, the grand challenges are before us. Clean water for a billion people, housing for everybody, clean energy for the planet. These seem like impossible tasks. How can we accomplish this? Do we need large government spending to do this? Do we need massive programs to do this? We now have the tools and techniques from 20 years of moonshots to tackle these grand challenges. We don't have to wait for the big programs. We can start now. We can look to these ideas and make sure that we all participate. Schools, students, everyone can be part of this. And moonshots are not just for Google, not just for XPRIZE. Startups can be moonshots. When Tesla started about 10 years ago, again, once again, people thought it was crazy. Look up the press. They said, there's been no successful car company in 100 years in America. How could we start one now? People said it could not be done. And sure enough, we know Tesla is here today. But Tesla was not the only one at that time. There was another company, Fisker. Anyone remember Fisker? Fisker was really the bridge technology. 
was a technology that allowed you to have a car that had electricity, but also gas at the same time. Reduce that anxiety range. And which one won? If we were all the venture capital community and said, let's fund one of these, the one that requires less behavior change from the consumer, the Fisker, that reduces anxiety, or the Tesla, something very bold. Well, what in fact happened? The bold one won, the audacious one won, the one that was crazier won. Why? Because today, we're in a war for human capital. We're in a war for financial capital. Every single idea out there is vying for these resources. But the best and brightest go to the bigger vision. The best and brightest go to the crazier vision because that's the one that will have the major change. So ironically, it sounds counterintuitive, but the more audacious vision is the one that is more likely to succeed. The more audacious vision is the one more likely to succeed because this is the one that will have the best human capital. This is the one that will attract the financial capital. This is the one that will capture the mind of the consumer. And today, that's one of the key reasons why Tesla is there and Fisker is not. So what are some of the tools and techniques for getting great moonshots done, for repeated success in moonshots? Here's one, the 100-year test. Ask yourself this question. In 100 years, are we going to be doing this thing the same way we do today? In 100 years, are we still going to be digging up coal from the ground and burning it for electricity? I think not. In 100 years, are we still going to be using petroleum to drive our cars? Probably not. In 100 years, are we still going to be using toxic poisons like chemotherapy to try to solve cancer? Probably not. So if we know that's the future, if we know that's 100 years from now, let's start the future today. Let's bring the future forward. Let's talk about chemotherapy. Chemotherapy derives from mustard gas, from toxic poisons. This has been around for 40, 50 years. We know now there are better ways. Instead of killing the immune system, instead of suppressing the immune system, we can actually build up the immune system. We can use immunotherapy, therapies that allow the immune system itself to fight the cancer. In the past few years, we now have successful immunotherapies on the market, saving millions of lives today. These are new, bold, and audacious paradigms. These are the ones that we need to put our efforts behind, not incremental work, where billions of dollars are still going to try to incrementally improve chemotherapy. Let's go for the bolder idea. Let's attract the human capital, the financial capital, the systems we need to go for the bigger vision. So what are some of these tools and techniques? First, let's solve the hard problems. If you want to attract the best and brightest, let's go for the big ones. Let's go for the grand challenges, not just for the planet, but also in your own lives, here in the community. If you want to change education in your own community, go with a bold vision, not an incremental one. Don't just try to change one period, one week. Let's go for bold visions. Then let's think 10x and 100x. It sounds counterintuitive, but if we, <clears throat> it sounds counterintuitive, but if we make the problem 10x bigger, 100x bigger, we actually can find new solutions that we would not find otherwise using incremental approaches. This is a technique we've used again and again. If you want to solve the water crisis and you want to say, let's get water to a billion people, sure, you can try to drill a well here, drill a well there, that's incremental. Let's go for bolder visions, visions that will attract the kind of talent we need to address these huge challenges. We can use these for the planet, we can use these for the nation, we can use these in our own community, we can use these in our own lives. Let's not be afraid to say, hey, we want to start on this journey. We don't know all the steps. When JFK put out the mission to the moon, did we know how to get to the moon? We did not. We didn't have all the steps. We didn't have all the technology. And we knew that we had to start down that journey to get there. The collaboration, the human innovation, the creativity of each of us. This is what comes out when we call for moonshots. This is, the, the, this is the creative juice that comes out when we attack the grand challenges. So it's the more audacious ideas that actually turn out to have higher likelihood of success. It's the more audacious ideas that actually can win out over the incremental. This is our time. We now have the body of evidence, the tools and techniques to make this happen. When Roger Bannister broke that four-minute mile, he did so in part, not because he was some freak of nature, some new kind of, per, you know, <clears throat> some freak of nature, some new kind of form of evolution, but he knew in his mind that it was only a second and a half faster than anyone else had run before. He made that mental breakthrough. 
and that allowed him to run fast in four minutes. And in fact, within a year, dozens of people did as well. It's this mental breakthrough that we need to get through and allow us to get to these kinds of mucha thinking again, not just for the grand challenges, but in our own lives, in our startups, in our companies, in our communities. When we look out at the horizon, we're very excited to see these techniques taking hold. But actually, we went around the planet and counted all the moonshots today. Well-funded moonshots, there's only about 35 of them. We don't have the escape velocity right now to achieve all the grand challenges. We need everyone involved, everyone collaborating in small teams, high school teams, college teams, teams of people, engineers, designers, creative people. This is not just for techies. This is for everyone to be involved. And here's a moonshotter who understood the nature of this kind of enterprise. He knew that when you start along the journey of a moonshot, you will be ridiculed. People will say you're crazy. People will say, this is not possible. But in the end, you will win. You will win because the vision attracts the kind of people who want to share the planet that has that reality. This is our future. I invite you to join us in this I invite you to join us in this enterprise. Do a moonshot. Thank you.